Hello everyone, this is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and for the love of Gesso and all that is holy, <laughs> that is all we are going to talk about today. So as you can see, I have a bunch of different products in front of me and you can see I have a bunch of different swatch guides. So what am I doing? I am going to test different brands of clear gesso and finally I'm gonna just do a comparison video in regards to their cost, their texture, their application, everything basically that I can pretty much provide you with as far as information goes about each one of these products. Now I'm gonna show you right off the bat that one of these is not like the others. So the reason this one got included was because long ago on the group, one of my members mentioned that she had tested this particular product as a primer for one of her canvases and she liked it. It is basically more of a glaze and a finishing sealer, but I thought, why not test it? So I did test it and I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one and pull it out because I did not like it for priming. It did not work as far as I'm concerned for prepping the canvas. I think it would work beautifully for sealing a finished piece. So I'm gonna keep this product in my stash and I'm gonna maybe use it later for a video about sealing our paint by number pieces. This one is actually called Chroma's Josonia. I'm not sure if the J is more of a Y here, clear glaze medium, and it says a light surface sealer. So let me discuss really quickly how I have everything else prepped as far as what these swatches are, what's different about these. I took my digital swatch guide that is on the Melanie B's Creative Supplies website for download, and I printed it on a printable canvas so that I would have the right surface to test my clear gesso on. Then I swatched a paint palette from a paint by number kit I had that did not have a great opacity. And I did it because there were some paints that had good opacity and there were some that were translucent, were some that were transparent because I needed a swatch that was going to be kind of all over the place. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to test it with the different clear gessos to see any difference in the outcomes. So that's what I did here. This one with no gesso. And this is our comparison swatch. Then I took each of the other swatches and I applied clear gesso from this point down. So let's yeah. talk about which products I'm testing. Anything that was more expensive than the Dina Wakely one, which is right here by Ranger Industries, I didn't go more expensive than that one because I try to be cost conscious when I bring you products. So that was, you know, the purpose behind that. And that is why you're seeing the five that are here in front of me right now. So I've started with the one I already had, which is the Liquitex Clear Gesso. This is the only one I had ever tested before. This is the one I've used for the last three years. This is the one I've always brought to you. There were four areas of kind of interest that I focused on when I went through each item. Cost, texture, meaning the texture that was left once the product dried, whether it was thick, thin, you know, watery, and whether it could be diluted or not. How long it took to dry, the application process, and how I had to apply it, and what was the best method for applying it. Of course, I was paying attention to whether it gave me any difference in my swatch in comparison to the original. Was it even worth it to gesso a canvas with the product in the end? You know, whether it worked or not for us, that was the bottom line. So when it comes to the Liquitex Clear Gesso, as we all know, the Liquitex leaves a very gritty sandpaper texture. I used a brush to apply it. 
It has a medium consistency and it does come in a bottle which is really easy for squeezing and dispensing. So if you want to pour it onto your surface directly, you can do that, which I do like about the bottled product. Liquitex claims that this can be diluted. Doesn't mean you wanna water it down, but you can thin it down if you need to. This did give me a rough texture. You know, I do not sand in between layers. I leave that texture because that is what has given me tooth and the best opacity, but it does have that sandpaper texture. And that is the thing a lot of people don't like about the Liquitex brand. This gesso did not smear the ink on my printed swatch when I applied this, which is gonna be important on a couple of these others. Now, the final thing I wanna mention about the Liquitex that I do like is that it is not just available in an eight ounce bottle, but it's also available in a 16 ounce, and this is a 32 ounce, and they also have like a bucket size. So you have options on sizes, and of course, the larger you go, the better the price is going to be per ounce. So that is something to keep in mind with the Liquitex brand. Now let's move on to the next one, which is US Art Supply. This bottle was available in the 16 ounce size. As far as texture goes, this one I thought was supposed to have a grit to it, but it did not. So that was kind of a surprise to me. It has a matte textured finish, but it's still a little slick and so I wasn't prepared for that because I was thinking that it was supposed to be kind of a gritty texture, which means it had tooth, which is kind of what I expected. So I was surprised when it dried and it did not have that. The application, it did come in a bottle, which I did like, but it was very thick. And I'm not really a fan of a very thick clear gesso just because it can be hard to apply on a very large surface like a 16 by 20 canvas. So, you know, that just means I'm working extra hard to smooth it out and whatever. It did not say anything about whether it can be diluted. So I'm always a little cautious and wary about adding water to something that doesn't say it can be diluted. But you know me, that's one of those things that I would probably try if I wasn't sure. I'm not going to recommend people dilute something that doesn't say it can be diluted. If that's something you wanted to try, then I would say try it at your own risk. Now I did apply this one with a brush and also with the squeegee that did not smear the ink from the printer, which was a good thing. Now moving on to the Montmartre, the texture of this had a little bit of gritty tooth to it, not a lot, Nothing like the Liquitex. The application was thick. What I did like about this one was that it dried very quickly. With, and it says on the bottle it dries within 30 to 60 minutes. And it seems like it dried even quicker than that, but it is because I put a thin layer on these swatches. So all of these dried really fast, much faster than I would have expected. And so, uh, but this one dried, I think the fastest of all of them. Montmartre was available in an 8.5 ounce bottle. I didn't see it in other sizes, but that's only because when I found it on Amazon, I just purchased the one that I found. This one does say to shake it before applying it so it's not watery and separated. It does not say anything about can be diluted. So again, I'm not really gonna recommend, you know, diluting unless you try it yourself on a test area or something like that. But again, I probably would just because that's who I am. And I like to test things for myself. Now this one did smear when I put it on my swatch. It, it smeared my ink, which is really interesting because the ink that I use is on an HP printer that does not smear. It is waterproof ink. The reason that concerns me is because we use paint by numbers that are printed in different factories with different sources. And some of those use similar types of ink that we use in our printers or whatnot. So the fact that this smeared made me nervous. I don't like that. I do see many people on my group say things about, I wonder why my gesso smeared the ink on my paint by number. And I've never in three years of using Liquitex 
never seen ink on a paint by number smear. So it might be the inks that some of these manufacturers are using, or it might be the gesso that a member's using. And I know that certain brands are not available in all countries. And so I'm almost wondering, I know that Montmartre is available in Australia. I don't know that Liquitex is available in Australia. And so it might be that just certain companies are only available to get certain products. And so that's why they're seeing that smearing. Not sure, speculation on my part. So I, I'm just wondering if that's the reason for that. This one is Art Basics by Prima Marketing. I've been using Prima Marketing products since I was in card making and paper crafting. So long time. They have fabulous products, but their original creations were designed for card making and paper crafting and things like that. So you don't necessarily see this product in what I would consider to be the art field as much as you will paper crafting field. So when I got this one, I wasn't real sure you know how it's going to work because it's kind of like the one beside it here which i'll get to in a minute and it's designed more for that mixed media type of art so this particular brand had a matte texture no grit but it has a really neat matte texture it's not slick kind of hard to explain um it's not rough at all but it's 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 slick but it's not i mean it's it's just matte so um i can't explain that one it's not shiny because it was made for paper crafts and things like that i think that's the reason it is in a jar and not more in a squeeze bottle you know people are dipping into it instead of squeezing out large amounts for things so this is an eight and a half ounce jar it is very thick and i used a brush to apply it this one did not smear my swatch in any way, but it left a beautiful smooth finish on the swatch. Now I did test this one diluted slightly. I took a little bit of warm water and diluted it down a little bit, just a little bit, just to test it for myself. And I didn't have any problems with it. Um, again, I don't recommend you do that because it doesn't say anything about being okay to dilute it, but you know me, you know, I'm gonna do my own thing, chicken wing. So moving to the final product, which is the Dina Wakely Media Clear Gesso. And again, this is for mixed media artists. This is only a four ounce jar. The texture is a matte texture and it's pretty similar to the Art Basics, but it's a little more matte. So it's not quite as slick as this one, even though this one's not slick, it's just a little more matte finish. This one curls up, if you see that. I don't know why it's doing that, but it's just odd to me. I did use a brush to apply this one, and this one smeared. So I'm really unhappy with that, and don't understand it. So I had two that smeared, the Montmartre and the Dean & Wakely, which pretty much disqualified them in my book right off the bat. But I do have other things we'll talk about in a minute about these two anyway. Right off the bat, I was unhappy with these two when I saw that they smeared. As far as being diluted, once again, I didn't see anything about whether it's okay to dilute it. Now, any of these can be layered with multiple layers if you need to. I only applied one layer just for the test. Depending on the texture of my canvas is how many layers I use for gesso. Having said that, most of my canvases only get one. If it is a very deeply textured canvas, I will do as many as three. I've never done more than three. Rarely do I do three, but it just depends. If those divots are super deep, then I will put three. The whole purpose for me to do that many is to make sure I'm getting an even surface so that my paint is not getting lost down in the little divots. So a lot of times before I'll put on a third layer, I will check a small area. And if I'm not seeing those divots anymore, I'm not putting on three layers, but I usually do 95% of my canvases with one layer of gesso. That is why I tested every one of these swatches with one layer. And this canvas paper is very similar to our paint by number canvases. Now let's move 
all of these out of the way. We're going to focus in on the swatches and do lots of comparisons here before we move on to more information. Okay, so I wanted to get in here as closely as possible to compare the regular swatch and the gessoed swatch. So what I'm gonna do is kind of overlap the two swatches. So what I wanted to show you, and I marked the ones I felt were distinctly different with the gessoed side and the non-gessoed side. So anything with a little bullet beside it are the ones that I felt like looked different enough to point out. This is the Liquitex gessoed swatch next to the no gessoed swatch. But you can see with number one that there is a distinct difference in coverage. You can see how all the swatches are smoother in application on the gessoed side than you can on the non-gessoed. So that is what some of these are marked for. And number five, I definitely saw more opacity on the Liquitex one. Number six, less streaking, better opacity. Number seven, much better opacity for sure. Eight, better opacity, less streaking. Number nine, better opacity. Number 10, you can definitely see a difference with number 10. Number 11, same thing. Number 12, same thing. 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, better opacity. 21 and 22 were good on both swatches, but big difference in using clear gesso before you paint. So definitely a big difference with the Liquitex. Let's talk about US Art. Now here you can see the finish is shiny with the gesso. So it is slick. That's kind of defeating the purpose of putting it down to begin with because it doesn't change the surface of our original canvas. In fact, it makes it more slick, in my opinion, which is what this video is all about. <laughs> it's my opinion. All right, let's talk about opacity. The only ones I really saw a difference in these two swatches was number five. And with number five, it was not a ton of difference, but it had more to do with less streaking here on the US Art swatch. Number seven, I got a little better coverage here. And number 11, I got better coverage. Number 13, I got better coverage here. Number 16, I put a question mark only because it was a little bit better. 17, it was better, but I still had stroke marks in my swatch. So I'm not sure if you can see, but it definitely gave me better overall coverage. 18 was better, but again, I had stroke marks which I don't get with the Liquitex. So it actually removed some paint. I have some white showing through, which I'm not sure I'm really able to pick up with the camera. 19, I got a better coverage and less streaking. I actually thought that I had better coverage on the un side than I did with these two on the gesso side. So US Art is not scoring well, in my opinion. So let's move to Montmartre. All right, let's look at the finish. See if you can see, you can't even see where I have applied the clear gesso on the Montmartre side. You can probably see some of the smearing here in the ink. It is not a ton, but it was enough for me to notice it. And when I was applying the gesso, so I was kind of shocked about that. But let's go in here and check these swatches. So there weren't a lot that had any noticeable difference in the swatching itself. You can definitely see a difference in the coverage. And number seven, number 11 was very lightly noticeable difference. 12 is the same way, very lightly noticeable. 16 from here to here was a little bit better. 17, same way. The blue seemed to do very well. 18 was pretty much the same. 19 was just less streaking, but not necessarily better opacity. So I didn't mark it. 20 seemed to be a little bit better opacity because you can see here it's streaky and it didn't have good opacity and that was it. So let's move to Art Basics. Let's talk about 
how the gesso looks and applies. You can barely see the line where I applied, but I mean, you, if only if you're looking for it. So it's slick here and that you can hear it here, but there's no like grit to it. So let's talk about the ones that are better on this swatch. Now I should have mentioned in the beginning and I apologize for not doing so. Many of these paints were very much that gel type of paint that doesn't have any opacity. I mean, it was just horrible. And like you can see these pinks were just horrible paints. And like this is with two coats and this was with two coats. So I did the same for each of these swatches with two coats, but that's why you're not seeing real good swatches because they were just jelly almost. So the red definitely had better opacity and I'm hoping you can see that. Even though it's still translucent here, it definitely had better opacity, but it just had a better coverage in general as far as lack of stroke marks. The opacity in number two is a little bit better, even though you can still see the paint pot. It's not that it made it not translucent, it just gave it a better coverage overall. So I'm hoping that translates well. Same with number three, same with number five. This one had streaks in it or paint strokes and this one did not. Number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. Number 10 is definitely an improvement. Number 11 is better. Number 12 went from translucent to opaque. Here, let's talk about the yellow because yellow, you know, is freaking yellow. Definitely a much bigger improvement, even though unfortunately yellow is still translucent. It had an improvement between the non gesso and the gesso side. Let's get a number 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 all had better coverage, but also just better finish in the final swatch. So I really liked the Art Basics. Now the only one I didn't mark was because of the texture of the paint, I was having trouble getting a smooth coat and a smooth stroke on number 14 on my gesso side, but I didn't really have a problem with it on the non gesso side, but it's probably because by now I was tired of painting swatches. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's the gesso problem, the paint problem or a Melody B problem. <laughs> to chalk it up to being my fault on that one. You can even see down here how beautiful this first one was and then how, you know, ugly they started to get because I was just like, I'm done. <laughs> but holding it up in the light, you can see the coverage is so much better once I do this because um, down here it looks like they're translucent or transparent, but you can definitely see better coverage on the right hand swatch than on the left hand swatch when I've got the light hitting it just right. All right, so let's go to the final swatch with Dina Wakely and compare that one. All right, and finally, Dina Wakely. So number one definitely looked better. Number two was a little bit better in opacity. Then let's jump down to number five here. And that one was just a little tiny bit better, not, not a huge amount of difference there. Seven and eight were both better in opacity. 10 and 11 were better. Then we're gonna jump all the way down to 16, 17, and 18. The blues seem to improve some, not a ton, but slightly. And then 21 was okay in improvement, but not um, completely. I mean, there's still some streaking in the one on the right with Dina Wakely. And if you look at number 22 at a tilt, <laughs> notice the streaking in the stroke marks, but none on the non gesso side. So yeah, I was not real impressed with the Dina Wakely one. And that's a shame, honestly. The final comparison I want to do is gonna be between the Liquitex and the Art Basics because I was very surprised in my outcome. Because you guys know, I've always been a big fan of the Liquitex and I still am. And I have one more test that I wanted to run and I almost forgot to mention this in the beginning, but it's important to test on the different types of surfaces, like a slick surface canvas and 
So I wanted to make sure that I tested the Art Basics on a slick surface canvas because it does have less of a tooth than Liquitex. So I did that, but first I want to compare these two swatches against each other because these are my two leaders right now in this competition, if you wanna call it that. So if you notice, the ones that were better than the original swatch on this one, there were 17 out of the original 22 paints that had improved from the original swatch to this swatch. But on the Art Basics one, there were 20 out of 22 that were in improvement. So, you know, according to swatches, the Art Basics beat out my Liquitex. I'm shamed. All right, so let's compare these and make sure that my comparison is accurate. So I, I circled the swatch that I felt had the best opacity or coverage on one of the other swatch. And, you know, it all could be about application too. The Art Basics one won out as far as which one had the better or more of these circled swatches. If I didn't circle it, it just means they were even in coverage and opacity. And, you know, otherwise, the Art Basics one has kind of stolen the show here when it comes to all of these gessos, which surprises me and yet thrills me at the same time because I love the fact that it doesn't have the sandpaper texture. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's talk about the least expensive to the most expensive in this bunch. Well, first of all, no gesso is not gonna cost you a thing. So, <laughs> but the cheapest out of this group, US Art Supply, it's gonna run you about 93 cents an ounce. Montmart is next at a dollar six an ounce. Art Basics is going to be a dollar 29 an ounce. Liquitex is gonna be for an eight ounce bottle, it's about a dollar 99 an ounce, but the larger you go, the cheaper the ounce. So my 32 ounce bottle was a dollar 15 an ounce. And then we have the Dina Wakely by Ranger Industries that is a whopping $2.30 an ounce. That is a large price to pay for one that I didn't see a huge difference on. So which ones are my favorite from least favorite to most favorite? Okay, so now I've moved them around a little bit and I've put them in order from my least favorite to my most favorite. Dina Wakely is my least favorite because of the warping in this canvas. It's driving me insane right now. I don't like the fact that it's $2.30 per ounce for not giving me what I need and for warping my canvas. Like, I don't get it. It did a better job as far as you know, giving me a little bit better coverage and opacity than these other two right here. But for the price, I'm expecting phenomenal and it's definitely not phenomenal. So because the cost is exorbitant and it's giving me this wonky, you know, finish, it's my least favorite. So, poo. Then I would have to say I'm equally displeased with the U.S. Art Supply and the Montmartre, which is very disappointing because I would have been able to carry Montmartre in the supply shop, but I'm not carrying something in the supply shop if I don't love it. So if I'm never able to carry gesso in the supply shop, I'm okay with that. I'd rather bring you a fabulous product than none at all because I'm just not gonna settle. So. These two, they're just not worth, you know, even if it's the cheapest and the second cheapest, I'm not okay with that. I'm not, I'm just not. So not worth the money. And having said that, if Montmartre is the only option in your country and you are one of those people that are like, adding clear gesso to your canvas is pointless and you're those people that have seen talking about what a waste of time it is, well, no wonder, because you're wasting your time. Like, I did not see such a distinct difference necessarily in this particular paint swatch, you know, maybe to even apply it. 
there were eight out of 22 paints that did get an improvement. So I shouldn't maybe say that, but I guess when I compared it with better gessos, I wasn't as impressed. So I guess if that's all you had, it's not horrible, but knowing what else is available to me or to us in the US, it's really hard for me to say, go buy this right now, you know, but if that's all you have, I can understand why maybe you're not a fan of Claire Gesso. So having said that, let's move on. Liquitex and Art Basics, I'm kind of on the fence, but I'm leaning you guys towards <laughs> Art Basics. Oh my God, like what, what? You know, I'm a creature of habit. I'm used to this texture, but I have to say that today and my test has kind of opened my eyes to our basics. I'm, I'm loving it. I'm not sending this one back. <laughs> if you promise me something and it doesn't work, I'm sending you back. Sorry, that's just the way it is. So, didn't work. Bye-bye, shoe fly, don't bother me. So after I finished the entire video, <laughs> analysis and everything, I decided to go back to Amazon and see what the price was of a few other clear gessos, just so I could be as thorough as possible in this video. And I ended up buying the Windsor Newton Clear Gesso Crafters Workshop, which is TCW clear gesso and the golden, the semi-opaque gesso, but they sent me the bright white and obviously that is not going to work. So this one's going back. I decided to just leave golden out of this test because I'm not gonna waste another minute doing this test. So I went ahead and gessoed these swatches just like the rest of them. And the final thing I'm gonna do is just compare these two to my final favorites. And in a second, you'll see why I'm gonna compare these two to those two. So first with the Windsor Newton, let's discuss the texture. So it does have a light tooth. And let me compare it to the Liquitex tooth. So you can hear it here. So there is a distinct difference between the texture here and the texture here. So it's not as much of a sandpaper texture on the Windsor Newton as it is on the Liquitex. I don't believe with the Windsor Newton clear gesso that it would require any sandpapering at all for those who choose to do that. It doesn't feel like it would need that between layers for those of you who add multiple layers. Now, Remember, I only did one layer of clear gesso on all of these swatches. I applied it with a squeegee and it does come in a jar and it's very fluid. Now on the back, it says somewhere in between being fluid and thick. I found it to be very fluid when I applied it. So in my opinion, this is something that would have to be applied with a brush because with the squeegee, that I'm using, and I will be discussing my squeegee that actually came in today in a future video, because I'm super excited about it. But it was a little too thin, really, for that purpose. I didn't even look to see if it could be diluted because it would not need to be diluted. The dry time on this was pretty quick. As far as cost, the container I purchased was 7.6 ounces, which breaks down to $1.76 an ounce, which puts this one up there with the most expensive options. So let's move to the Crafters Workshop Clear Gesso. Now this is one of those gessos that is more designed for paper craft artists and mixed media artists. So again, this is not necessarily designed for art, based projects like acrylic painting and oil painting and things like that. So it's more designed for paper crafters. But again, this is one of those matte textured finishes, more like the Art Basics that I brought you. And that's why I kept those other two swatches out and we're gonna compare the Liquitex and the Art Basics to these two in our final analysis. 
So with this one, it had a great consistency. It wasn't too thick or too thin, so you can see that it had a really nice consistency for applying with the squeegee, which is how I applied it. I don't think it's gonna need to be diluted, and it did not say anything about whether it could be diluted. Drying time was actually very fast on this one as well, so that was not something that I thought was gonna be one of those, I'm gonna have to wait all day kind of things waiting for your gesso to dry. The cost is about $1.50 an ounce because we have an eight ounce jar. All right, now let's do the close-up comparison to our original swatch for both of these, and then we're gonna do the final analysis. All right, so let's take a close look at the Windsor Newton and see what it looks like when we compare the no gesso swatch to the gessoed with Windsor Newton clear gesso swatch. So I'm going to tilt it up. I ended up marking the ones that I thought were a notable difference here. Number two, number five, number seven, number eight, number 11, number 12, 13, number 14, number 17, number 19. I didn't think the rest of them were that much of a difference, but overall, I felt like the application was better on the gessoed surface. And so a lot of the reason why we apply clear gesso to begin with is to fill in the divots and to give us a smoother application. And for all of the swatches that I applied the clear gesso, I noticed a notable difference in application. I felt like the paint went on smoother. It just, I don't know, it felt like it was different. Now I feel like this particular type of canvas would require two layers of clear gesso. And so that would make a big difference in the overall outcome of the swatching and maybe that's what I should have done in the beginning but I didn't really know until I started swatching that it would need two layers so that would make an overall you know big difference but I felt like application wise that the clear gessoed side was just a better more enjoyable surface no matter which one I used than the non gessoed side to work on. So let's move to the Crafters Workshop gesso swatch and compare it and see how it did. Now remember, this is more of a matte finish with no gritty texture. There was slight improvements in some of these and major improvements in others. So number one was a slight improvement more in application than in opacity. Number two was better in opacity and application. Number seven was better in opacity for sure, and eight as well, nine, 10, 11, and 12, a little bit better for opacity and for application. 14 was better for opacity, 16, 17, and that was it for this one. I wanna compare it to the Art Basics, and remember I already had marked a lot of these for the final analysis earlier, so I'm gonna to try to kind of ignore that right now. Art basic seems to be better on this one, a little bit better for number two and number four and number five, number six. Seven and eight seem pretty equal. Nine seems to be better over here, 10 over here, 11 and 12. It looks like Art Basics is definitely still a clear winner when it comes to this matte finished type of gesso. And I'm not even gonna continue because Art Basics definitely had better coverage um, for sure, because most of these are an improvement over these. So I'm gonna set this aside. We're gonna look at the Windsor Newton and the Liquitex because both of these have that gritty textured finish. It looks like here that Liquitex has a better finish. So it has a much smoother application. I'm not sure if you can see that in the light. It's not streaky at all. And even though the opacity here looks a little bit better, there's no streaking in this Liquitex one and here as well. And this looks like it's got better opacity. So when I tilt this down, I'm seeing such a nice application with the Liquitex over the 
Windsor Newton and just all of the swatches, but let me continue to check it for opacity. Starting from here, better opacity, better opacity, better, better, equally is good, better, 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 much better, 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 better. The final test was to take a canvas that has a fairly, so I had just gotten from Anna Banana, seemed to have a pretty slick texture. And so I just decided to choose this one. Now I had swatched the paints and number nine had been a tricky paint. So I decided to put down our basics gesso on this cell. I also put down Liquitex gesso in this cell for number nine. In addition, and I will show you here, to keep the test fair, I had painted a number nine with no gesso. So you can see this paint is just completely transparent to translucent with no prep under it. That's why I wanted to test it on a canvas directly with the actual paint with nothing underneath to prep it. So I've inserted a photo. What we're gonna look at is on the left, we have our Art Basics cell with the paint over it. You'll notice we have a matte finish. We have a filled in canvas that is going to prevent those holes. So it's gonna give us a smoother texture. We're gonna possibly need two layers of gesso. We're also gonna have much better paint coverage than not having any gesso at all. Because if you look at that middle photo, you're gonna see the number nine is shining through. We're also gonna have a problem getting paint down in those little divots, which means we're definitely gonna have to put on layer after layer if we don't have gesso at all. In addition, that means more paint use and a lot more work. On the Liquitex one, you're gonna see we had the best coverage of all, believe it or not. So even though we have a gritty tooth, which a lot of people don't like, the options are gonna be whether you are okay using a gritty toothed gesso or whether you would prefer a matte finished gesso. So you're gonna have to probably decide which one of those you're gonna wanna go with. And either one of those is gonna give you a really good coverage. With the Liquitex, I'm only gonna have to probably use one layer of Liquitex and that's gonna be a benefit to me. So for me, even though I'm really in love with the Art Basics and I'm gonna keep it on hand, I might be leaning towards my Liquitex more and more, but I like them both equally. All right, so in final analysis, I think it is clear that my favorite and the matte finish without texture is the Art Basics. It seems to be the clear winner for opacity, beautiful texture without the grit and super happy with it. It's very affordable, comparatively speaking. It's kind of middle of the road in price. And then the Liquitex, even though it's got the grit to it, did a beautiful job in overall beating out the rest of these. The price is perfect. So I know a lot of you don't like the tooth of the Liquitex, but it does do a beautiful job for our purposes. So if you've still got the clear gesso in the Liquitex, continue to use it. Like I said, I'm gonna keep both of them in my stash for different reasons. I'm super happy I did this video because now I have been enlightened and so have you. You guys, be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking that little button down there in the corner and go join me on Patreon, the Facebook group, and all of my social media. I now have a TikTok and once in a while I'll be adding little video clips of paint by numbers and some other Melanie B keeping it real kind of videos. So be sure to do that. And you guys, thanks as always for watching. I will see you back soon.